All right, welcome today to today's Office Tools Free Training Thursday. Today's topic will be on payments and the APX integration. Myself is the instructor on this. I am Chris Thompson, one of the training consultants. If you have any questions during this training, please feel free to add them into the GoToMeeting. I will answer as many as I can before the end of the session, otherwise I can get back to you later. Today's topic on payments and APX is going to cover creating payments, credit memos, and debit memos, what they're used for, tracking those payments, credit, and debit memos in the reporting systems that we have, creating and tracking deposits, and then the APX integration for creating the credit cards on file for the clients. Afterwards, if you still need further assistance, you can email or go to the website abacusnext.com support or abacusnext.com webinars in order to get further information for this. From here, we're going to go ahead and go into the payment section of Office Tools. To do this, we're going to go ahead and click on Billing and then Payments. This is where we're going to create all of our payments that we're going to be able to apply to a, an invoice for the contact. From here, we can also create a retainer, credit memo, or debit memo. For this client, we already have an invoice in place. And what I'm going to do first is show you how to create the payment. We're going to click on the plus button here, create new payment, which is going to bring up our new payment window. By default, it's going to show the company name that we're selected to. And from here, we can add the amount of the payment that we're going to be applying to the invoice. For this, I'm going to add the full amount of the invoice. I can add the type of method of the payment, such as a Visa card, ACH, any of that information. I can then add any notes I need to for this. And then if it's the same amount of the invoice, it will automatically apply it to the open invoice that's available. From there, I can go ahead and click Save and Close, and it will apply to the invoice and show the amount applied. If there's anything available afterwards, there will be a retainer amount. If I have a contact that does not have an invoice, and I just want to create a retainer for this contact, at that point, I can then click the plus button, Create New Payment. And when I add this information in, it will save it as a retainer. When I click Save and Close, it's still remaining here. I have a retainer amount, nothing applied, so that can be further applied to an invoice after it gets created. In our program, if you need to write off any time associated to an invoice, write off an amount to the invoice. We can create a credit memo. Same way by clicking the Add Payment button, create new credit memo, and add the amount in up here near the top. When I do this, it's going to create a negative amount that I can then apply to any open invoice that I need to write off. After I apply that, we would be able to see the amount applied to the open invoice and the invoice itself would be in write-off status instead of paid in full. If I have a payment that I have received and I need to refund that money, or write it off as maybe a bounce check. I can come in, create a debit memo, 
and this is going to reduce the amount of the payment that I have received. So I can apply this to the payment that has not been applied to an invoice. And now that retainer is no longer there. It's a debit and the debit memo has been applied so that way I no longer have that available to me. Now creating a deposit from within Office Tools, there are two ways to do this. When we go to create a payment and we apply it, at that time, if we know that that's the date and time that we're actually going to deposit, we can click the deposit button here, save and close, and it will ask us if we want to print the deposit slip now. I'm going to say no for right now, and it shows that we currently have a deposit for this particular payment. If I needed to create a deposit in bulk, I can come up to deposits with, from within payments, and this will show me the list of the current deposits I have. Right now, it's just the one payment that we created. I can come over to the right and click New, and this will allow me to add any payments that I have received into today's deposit date. If I need to change the date, I can come up to the right-hand corner, click in the drop-down, change the date, add whatever payments I need to. We're going to add these two to July 2nd. I can then close, and I now have my second deposit available to me. Now, when it comes to tracking these, we do have two reports that we can run. For payments, credits, and debit memos, we're going to come up to the menu bar and click on reports, billing reports, and we're going to scroll down to receipts reconciliation report. This is where we can choose a date range to look at. I'm going to go from the beginning of the month till today. We can also filter by any of these options here. If we need to see a specific payment type, such as payment, credit memo, or debit memo, we can choose that. If we leave this filter blank, it will show us all three. When I run this report, it will now show me all of the payments that have been, payments, credit memos, and debit memos that have been created during this month. And as we can see, all three of those are displaying, shows me that the payment has been deposited and what has been applied and unapplied. For the debits, or for the deposits, we have our deposit history report in the same location of reports and billing reports. And this is going to show any payments that have been deposited during this time frame. As you can see, we have the deposit date of 7-2 and 7-26. So if we have a payment that was made prior to this date, but not deposited until this date, it will still show up on this report. As we can see with the first contact there, the payment date was 6-5, the deposit date wasn't until Next on our list is going into the APX integration. From here, if we have not registered for APX yet, 
on the Payments tab, we have APX. When we click on this, it will give us the opportunity to register slash sign up for APX. There is a form that needs to be filled out by the company with all of your contact and billing information. It takes 24 to 48 hours for that to get processed. After that has been processed, you will then be able to click on APX here and you will see this same window with either the user guide or the manage cards availability to you. From here, we can click on manage cards. We can choose the contact from the drop down menu and we can select add card. With this window, we can put the name of the card holder, credit card number, expiration date, billing address, and if we want to send an email receipt, we can check the box and add that email address. As a note, this email address that gets added can only be changed afterwards by contacting APX support and having them update that email address for you. You will not be able to change that email address after you enter that in. We also have the option for e-check slash ACH to where we can add the account name, account number, routing number, and that information. And again, there is the send email receipt option for the client. If for whatever reason you need to change that email address, you will need to contact APX support. The other way to add credit card information to a client is by creating a payment. And at the bottom of the payments window is our setup. The difference between the manage cards and this setup is this setup will bring you directly to the save payment information as it will be saving for the contact that you have selected. And you will go through the same process as you did before. I'm going to go to ABC Company now because I already have a credit card saved on file for them. When I go to create a payment using APX, I will create a new payment, enter the amount, and then I can go ahead and choose the payment method. I know this is a Visa card. And then I can come down here and click charge for this particular payment. I can then process my APX payment. It wants to make sure that this is exactly what we want to send. I can select accept. And then it should go through to the APX and process that payment. If I were to click Save and Close without processing, it still gives me the option to. And we're going to cancel since we received an error. With APX, there are two new reports that apply with those. I can get to that either from clicking Billing Reports on the Payments tab and selecting AP APX Reports or I can go to reports and billing reports and it will take me to the same location. We will then have our APX credit card slash ACH billing statement. When that report is run, it will look like this. It will show your credit card processing detail everything that's been processed, and any ACH processing detail. The second report on here is the APX chargeback. This will 
show you all of the payments that your clients have disputed. So if you go ahead and process that payment, client says, no, I don't wanna accept that payment. They call their bank, they dispute that charge. That information will show up here on the APX chargeback. At this time, I'm going to look at the questions right now to see if there's anything in there yet. And it does not look like it. So the first question is, does APX work with chip read? With APX, you're just going to be entering in the card data. There is no reader that you're going to be using. Are there any other questions at this time? All right, well then I guess that will conclude today's webinar. If you do have any other questions, you can always email training at officetools.com or again, you can go to abacusnext.com forward slash support and from there, you can contact us.